Hello and welcome back everyone. So today in this lecture we will be looking into the major connectors. So for a removable partial denture to have an ideal and optimum stability it needs to extend to both sides of the arc. Because by extending to both sides the RPT can effectively distribute the functional forces that are being applied on any part of the denture. But for doing that there needs to be a connection between the right and the left side of the denture and the component that provides this connection is known as the major connector. So the main role of the major connector is to connect the parts of RPD on one side to the parts present on the other side. So therefore all the parts of the RPD are either directly or indirectly attached to the major connector. So by connecting the two main parts of the denture the major connector basically provides the cross arc stability which allows the denture to have resistance to displacement by the applied functional forces. It provides this cross arc stability by the broad distribution of forces being applied on any one part of the denture and hence overall contributing to the support of the entire prosthesis. Now there are a few basic guidelines that we need to keep in mind before designing any kind of major connector. In order for the major connector to provide any kind of cross arc stability it needs to have a rigid and a solid design. This means that the major connector cannot be flexible. Any kind of flexibility will not only make the force distribution less effective but will also end up damaging the underlying tissues. So the rigidity of the major connector is very crucial to its design. Along with having a rigid design the major connector should be free of any movable tissue. A classic example of the movable tissue is the floor of the mouth. So including a major connector directly onto a movable tissue like the floor of the mouth would be very damaging to the movable structures. Along with this gingival tissue impingement by the major connector should be avoided. And the margins of the major connector should be located far enough from the gingival margins as to avoid any kind of interference. Because hindrance of the major connector to the gingiva will only result in trauma to the gingiva. The recommended distance for the mandibular major connector is at least 4 mm below the gingival margins while that for the maxillary major connector is at least 6 mm. The reason why the mandibular is 4 mm is because the floor of the mouth is located beneath which as discussed is a movable tissue. So the mandibular major connector should not only be located far from the gingival margins but it also must be located far enough from the floor of the mouth as well. While the palate normally doesn't have a movable tissue. So that's why more space can be provided between the gingival margins and the maxillary major connectors. The next thing to remember is that there should not be any kind of bony or any other kind of soft tissue prominence along the path of insertion or removal of the major connectors. So the major connector should be designed in such a way that it doesn't strike any prominence along its path because that will only result in trauma to the structures. It is also necessary to provide appropriate relief beneath the major connectors especially when the areas of possible interferences are present like the prominent mid palatine sutures or any other kind of tori that are otherwise inoperatable. This is important as to avoid the setting of major connectors into these areas of possible interferences. Also when designing a major connectors for bases having distal extensions like the Kennedy's class 1 and class 2, adequate relief should be provided in the design of the major connectors. The reason is because the bases with distal extensions have the tendency to rotate in function and therefore can cause damage to the underlying tissues. Therefore in these cases we need to either provide relief below the major connector or place denture in such a way as to avoid tissue impingement. So in these conditions providing a relief to the major connector design is necessary because once the denture is fabricated without providing any kind of relief to the major connector design and later the major connector causes tissue damage then the adjustment and grinding to provide relief can seriously weaken the major connector which can be very demeaning for its rigidity and strength. Therefore carefully designing the major connector with proper shape, design, location and thickness can solve many of our problems. Now there are different types of mandibular major connectors and different types of maxillary major connectors each having their own unique design, indications and contraindications which I will discuss in my other videos. But the general guidelines for fabricating the major connectors remain more or less the same. 
so i hope everything is clear in this video if you still have any confusions questions or any other suggestions for the videos kindly comment down below so thank you everyone for staying till the end stay safe take care and goodbye